This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, June the 5th, 2019. It's the Feast of St. Boniface, an English saint of the late 7th century, born in Devon in 675 as Winfred. He made his mark in modern-day Germany, where he was the great organizer. This was the era of Charles Martel and the Carolingian kings. The world was still reeling from the collapse of the Western Roman Empire and the shift from a city-based top-down culture to a landlord serf culture. The church struggled as much as anyone to figure out how to exist in this entirely new world. And the most logical structures were fortified monasteries for outside the cities and the great cathedrals within the cities. Boniface was educated in modern-day Exeter at one of these fortified monasteries, and he was sent as a missionary to modern-day Utrecht in the Netherlands. He did that for a year or so, but Charles Martel was still in his hammering mood, and so Boniface headed home and was promptly sent to Rome, where the Pope renamed him and made him Bishop of Germania. The poor guy was named a bishop without an actual diocese organized yet and was told to go and make Germany Catholic or something. Obviously, he was successful and is remembered today as the patron of Germany and the Germanic peoples. And for something completely different today, in 1893, the Lizzie Borden trial began in New Bedford, Massachusetts. This was one of the first great press sensation events. Lizzie Borden was a 33-year-old unmarried woman living at home when her parents and her sister were brutally murdered with an axe. Lizzie was the main suspect. The murders took place around 10 a.m., and a house guest staying with the family had stepped out to run an errand. When he returned, the door was jammed, and the housemaid, Maggie, who was apparently home at the time, tried to get it open for him. And when she was trying to open the door, she heard Lizzie laughing upstairs, and had no idea that the entire family was already dead. The trial was a press sensation, with every detail being scrutinized and played for sales. Books, documentaries, and entire TV series have been made to recount the bizarre story of the young woman who may have murdered her family with an axe. Guilty or innocent, the whole fiasco is one of those true crime stories like Jack the Ripper or the JFK assassination that has just the right mix of violence, intrigue, and politics to prove that, as often as not, the truth is stranger than fiction. Finally today in 1956, Mississippi rock and roll singer Elvis Presley appeared on the Milton Burl show for the second time to introduce a new song called Hound Dog. The song itself wasn't that big of a deal. It was a simple upbeat blues track on the classic 12-bar blues trope. It was originally recorded four years earlier by Big Mama Thornton. Elvis was one of more than 250 artists to sing the song in the past 60 years. But the real story isn't the song, it's the appearance that Elvis made today on the Milton Berle show. And in particular, it's the signature hip shuffle that Elvis premiered when he sang it. Much like the first time Michael Jackson did the moonwalk, no one was 100% sure what they were seeing. But in 1956, everyone was sure that shaking your hips like that was not okay. In fact, it was basically pornographic. And the 40 million viewers who tuned in, that's one quarter of the entire U.S. population at the time. 40 million viewers were, uh, shall we say, all shook up. It was today that Elvis became an icon for the danger of rock and roll. And whereas the Beatles would be the good boys with the risque music, Elvis became a symbol of the bad boy. He was beloved of the young and villainized by the old. It's truly hard to overstate just how much impact this one performance had. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.